This is my hedgehog that I built just the last week here. And I've always been a fan of cute, cuddly creatures, especially with sisters in the house. They're always talking about and showing pictures of hedgehogs or other cute little animals. And so this was something I've been wanting to build in a while, for a while. And um, so I started off with shaping the, the face of it because that's the real defining feature with the little cute nose and the little black eyes that look up innocently. And the posing on this hedgehog was a real important important part of the presentation. A lot of people, with the curl of the hedgehog, he just looks up so innocently like, hey, you want to like rub his little belly or hold him? So I tried to uh, build it in that way that just shows off how cute they are. And um, I accomplished the spines with about 250 of those brown teeth pieces that came out in uh, Lego Movie 2 sets recently, which is, it was a large brick link order, but I think it uh, accomplished the effect really well. How did you get kind of the curvature of the hedgehog there that the, the spines are all attached to? Yeah, so there's these recent pieces. They're one by two plates that are rounded on the corners, and I was able to use those um, to, to curve the bricks. You can kind of see it on the belly. I used some white ones and some tan ones, and that holds most of the structure together. So, like you mentioned, you were really trying to create kind of the adorable little creature effect here. So, yeah. how do you transition something like a, a real-life hedgehog to Lego bricks? What sort of elements and pieces are you looking for as, as you're trying to make that build come together? Yeah, so obviously I wanted to give a furry effect. So I, I referenced some pictures of hedgehogs and said, oh, they have the white fluffy underbelly, but then the spiky contrasting the outside. So reference pictures really give me an idea of where I want to go with the direction. And then I look for elements to help support that. So I use some rounder elements on the belly and then spiky spiky on the outside. So even the clips without the, uh, the, the, the teeth pieces are, are spiky themselves. And you achieved a really nice look with it, and then you created this nice green scene for it to sit in. Yeah, I tried to use a lot of bright green pieces to contrast with it, as if he's just rolling around in the grass. Yeah. Great. And then you do have uh, this other scene we'll mention real quick as well, because it's such a unique scene here. So this is called Curious Birds. What What's happening here? Yes, this is kind of a strange build, <laughs> I, I, even for me. Um, so I did a challenge for myself last year in May to build a, a build every single day of the month using a seed element. And so that, that, for that day, I got the banana piece. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? I have a, a, a tight schedule today. So I was just throwing pieces together. I was like, this looks like a beak of a bird. So I created a simple bird design and then mul like, mil built multiple, multiple of them. And then I was like, man, they're kind of actually expressive for even being simple builds. And so I decided to lay them all out. And they're like, oh, they're craning their necks. And then I was like, this, this cat is perfect. <laughs> they're all curious about this cat. And that just it got, came together that way. But... It gives me a sort of a Dr. Seuss sort of vibe with the, the, the basic colors and then the curiousness of it. That, that's how that came about. No, that's so true. I love the kind of artistic whimsy that a lot of your builds give off that we've covered here. So I'm so glad you were able to, to bring them all to Bricks Cascade. It's wonderful to see your work, and I can't wait to see what you bring in the future. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It's exciting.